Coloring the dinosaurs is an exciting new field of study that is opening up the world of dinosaurs piece by piece. Though still restricted and in its infancy, color holding cells are being found and described in many new feathered dinosaurs, showing them to be as varied as the ones we live with today. A brand new study reconstructs the colors of yet another, Wulong. Color almost seems like a mundane aspect of our lives, at least at an immediate face value. But what makes color, color? Well, pigments usually. Pigments are colored substances that are completely or nearly insoluble in water. One of the most commonly produced pigments in the animal world is melanin, your reds, browns, blacks, and grays. These pigments are found in organelles in the animal cell called melanosomes. They synthesize, store, and transport the melanin. Despite the seeming impossibility of it, sometimes the organelles that held pigments can become preserved as a fossil when the animal that had them died. Since the discovery of fossil melanosomes, inference of original colors and color patterns has offered new insights to the lives and appearances of dinosaurs, such as the dynamics between vision and color in the Mesozoic, and the degree to which non-avian dinosaurs already exhibited several traits we know from the avian ones. Birds are highly visual in their behavior, both in how they talk to one another and how they hunt their prey. They therefore exhibit some of the most remarkable ranges of color patterns seen in the animal kingdom. Birds have a lot of unique traits that their non-avian ancestors and cousins did not. One of those traits is the common expression of shiny metallic feathers, an optical phenomenon known as iridescence. Iridescence in animals is a result of structural color rather than color pigments within their cells. You can learn more about the many different kinds of structural colors in my Paleo 101 video on the subject. In short, the metallic sheen you see is light scattering around different layers of keratin or exoskeleton. While sometimes being employed in camouflage, such as the bright green plumage on the backs of hummingbirds, iridescence is more commonly thought to be utilized in signaling, helped by the ability for birds to see into the UV spectrum. A single fossil feather was found in the Eocene-aged Messel oil shale of Germany that preserved the original nanostructure of melanins that would likely have been iridescent in life. But the state of preservation in non-avian dinosaurs from northeastern China complicates identification of such nanostructures because the squishy bits got squashed and cooked after death, resulting in some chemical reactions that may have changed the remains. The fossils being exposed to the atmosphere before humans got to them has resulted in these fossil feathers mostly being imprints in the rock. However, it has been demonstrated that iridescent nanostructures are composed of melanosomes with a unique range of anatomies distinct from melanosomes involved in generating melanin-based coloration or non-iridescent structural color. This has allowed for the identification of iridescence in plumage in paravian and enantiornithine stem group birds, including flattened melanosomes that would incur highly bright iridescent hues, which is good actually. Iridescent nanostructures only occur within barbules of a feather, which evolutionarily appear to have evolved amongst the manoraptorans and more derived paravians. Barbules are the barbs of the barbs of a feather that zipper together to form the general shape of a feather for gliding or flying. It's therefore noteworthy that iridescence has been encountered amongst different paravians from various lineages, attesting to a close coincidence between the origin of the structural component hosting the color and its first occurrence. Additionally, iridescence seems to have evolved convergently on multiple occasions amongst crown group birds. Reconstructing the colors of ancient avian and non-avian dinosaurs via their preserved melanosomes allows for the testing of a bunch of hypotheses with regard to the evolution of birds and their ecology. But there have only been a few studied so far, which doesn't exactly help broaden the understanding of the role and importance of iridescence during the early to mid stages of bird evolution. From the perspective of understanding non-avian dinosaur ecology, many other questions arise. 
How did plumage vary within a species, such as possible sexual dimorphism or changes throughout growth? Did dinosaurs change feather color and patterns as they matured from juveniles to adults, as is the case for many living birds? A study was published in Acta Paleontologica Polonica in June of 2023 by a team that included Angus Kraudes, Kaiji Shen, Jungchang Lu, Stephen Brusati, and Jacob Vinther on a previously described specimen of a Microraptorian dromaeosaur dinosaur that was found by a farmer in layers of the fossil-rich Zhifotang formation of Xiaoyang, Liaoning Province, China. This critter was described in 2020 as Wulong bohiensis, and the single known specimen preserves basically the entire skeleton plus a bunch of plumage, showing it to have been quite similar to the four-winged Microraptor, but with a forked tail fan and a slightly longer snout. The 2023 study reanalyzed the specimen to attempt to reconstruct the plumage coloration. Melanin-based coloration is the most prevalent source of coloration amongst vertebrates and the best understood with regard to how it preserves in the fossil record and how to find them in fossils. Two distinct chemical varieties exist amongst vertebrates, which are eumelanin and phaomelanin. Eumelanin-rich melanosomes are oblate and produce shades of black, whereas phaomelanin-rich melanosomes are smaller and ovoid in shape and produce rufous to gingery brown colors. A correlation between color and shape enables the use of statistical methods to predict fossil color using a dataset of modern melanosome measurements. To reconstruct the original color of the melanosomes in Oolong, the 2023 team used the dataset made and used in a 2019 publication in the journal Evolution on the melanosome diversity and convergence in the evolution of iridescent avian feathers with regard to its implications for paleocolor reconstruction by Clara Norden and colleagues. This was done to predict color with two models, the precariously named quadratic discriminant analysis and multinomial logistic regression. The dataset used was originally developed by some researchers in 2012, and they used 150 living critters for that data. A 2018 study expanded this dataset by adding 32 living iridescent animals, most of which were hummingbirds. Then that 2019 study by Norden and colleagues added even more with 124 additional iridescent critters, widening the evolutionary relationships in play and bringing the total dataset to 191 critters. The 2023 team took 16 plumage samples, labeled 1 through 16 here, and of a few millimeters in size from the Wulong specimen covering a broad spread of the dinosaur's body. They made sure to take samples from areas away from the gut section to avoid contamination with melanosomes from the internal organs, if they remained. Melanosomes were observed to be suitably well preserved in 8 of the 16 samples. All of these melanosomes had technically been oxidized and decayed, but thankfully left behind an imprint of where they had been, which is almost as good as if they had survived. So what did they find? The color prediction results of four analyses agreed consistently for nine of the ten individual Wulong specimens, with predictions conforming to iridescent and gray for different samples. Samples 6, 7, 14, 15B, and 16 were iridescent, indicating iridescent feathers across the limbs of Wulong. Samples 9, 11, 13, 15A, and 15C were gray, indicating Wulong had gray feathers on the main body, above the pelvis, and on parts of the forelimb. So, another dinosaur has been given a color, gray and iridescent. This happens to be the first instance of iridescent feathers in a juvenile dinosaur known from the fossil record, but not the first instance of fossil iridescence altogether. It's been found in Microraptor, Kaihong, and some more birdie dinosaurs. The shiny pelage of Wulong has been thought to serve some sort of display or signaling function. This study heaps some more data on the fire that is the hypothesis that feathers were being used by non-bird dinosaurs for all sorts of things rather than flight alone. Something to remember here, though, is that the team cannot give a precise color pattern for the animal, nor any other animal of the species or genus other than the individual they sampled. 
they were able to sample different parts of the feathers and found colors associated with those areas. But exactly what they meant for patterns and shapes of those colors is entirely speculative, so go wild with it when you reconstruct it. They also did not sample the tail feathers, which were shaped like a forked fan, which gives the impression of a display feature, so go ahead and color that however you want. Can't wait to see what other colors and patterns emerge as more samples are taken and more dinosaurs are found. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.